Hello, and welcome to the First Baptist Church of Tarentum's Lenten Lunch Worship Service. We praise God and thank him that you paused for a moment to just digest some word with us while you eat your lunch. I am Dr. Felicia Brock. I'm the pastor of First Baptist Church of Tarentum, Pennsylvania. And as always, always, I can't express enough how grateful I am that you stopped to spend time with us on today. Certainly, we look forward to the word that is going to be brought on today. And our minister for the day is Minister Valerie Black. Now, let me just tell you, my experience with Minister Valerie has been nothing but exceptional. Uh, Minister Valerie has such a bubbly personality, and we absolutely know that whenever Minister Valerie is in the midst, we are going to have a good time. And she's also willing to work. She most definitely is a worker for the cause of Christ. And, and we just praise God for her on this morning. So let me tell you just a little bit more about Minister Valerie. Valerie Black is a child of the Most High God and has been saved since she was 16 years old. She attended Bethel AME Church in Scranton, Pennsylvania before becoming a member of Shiloh Baptist Church. Valerie is now a member of United Baptist Church of Taylor. As of November 1st, 2020, Valerie has been the interim pastor at Baptist Tabernacle Church in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. She recently completed the American Baptist Churches of Pennsylvania and Delaware's Academy of Christian Training and Services and is grateful to God that he has given her the opportunity to serve his people. Amen. Amen. The next voice you will hear after a selection from our praise band is that of Minister Valerie Black. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope and no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remained my orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested and my life began. Now your day so free washes over me. Have made me new now life begins with you it's your endless love shining down on us you have made us new now life begins with you release from a change a sinner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested and my life began, oh, your grace so free washes over.
Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. That's when Jeff was arrested and my life brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, during this Lenten uh, time of year, uh, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. It is a pleasure and an honor to be before you to deliver this message from the Lord. I don't take it lightly. I take uh, addressing God's people very seriously, and it is a pleasure and an honor to be with you. Our scripture reading uh, for today is going to come from Luke, the gospel according to Luke, the fifth chapter, beginning at the first verse. And I will be reading from the New International Version of the Bible, and it goes as thus. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water, water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore left everything and followed him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, oh, how we love to call you our Father, our Abba Father, our Daddy. We come before you at this time, Lord God, just thanking and praising you for this opportunity to Present a word before your people once again. 
Lord God, we pray that what we say and do would be pleasing in thy sight. We know, Lord God, that we are nothing but sinners saved by grace, but Lord God, we are willing vessels to be used by you. So have your way, Lord. I pray that I would decrease and that you would increase. Hide me behind the cross, Lord God, so that you get all the honor and the glory and the praise. Let your word go out and not come back void like you said in your word. I am grateful and thankful, Lord God, for this opportunity and this privilege. And I don't take it lightly. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The title of this message today is Launch Out Into the Deep. Launch Out Into the Deep. Opportunities come and they go. We've all had opportunities in life. Some opportunities are good and some opportunities are not so good. In order to differentiate between the two, we need to have something called discernment. Discernment is the ability to judge well, to see beyond the superficial, to see underneath, not just on the surface. We know the old saying, everything that glitters ain't gold. We also know the saying that everything that looks good isn't good. We also know the saying, judge a, don't judge a book by its cover. As I said, in order to differentiate between the good opportunities and the bad opportunities, you need to have discernment. Good opportunities come along less often than the bad ones do. One of the shows during this pandemic time that I have grown an affinity for, don't ask me why, full-time, I'm, I'm a probation officer and normally I don't watch the news. I try not to watch the news because my attitude about that is I see criminals all day. I don't want to see them on my television also. So I don't watch the news for the most part. But the show that I grasped to hold on to is called First 48 Hours. Some of you may know about the show. It's about real life homicides and crimes. And you watch the detectives as they go through the process of solving the crime. I remember one particular episode where a young man found himself in a bad situation. He was a star high school football player who had scholarship offers from major division one schools. You see, he was on the verge of an opportunity of a lifetime. However, he made some bad decisions. And in general, people would look at that decision and say, it's not that big of a deal. But for him, it became a big deal. You see, he was the driver for some young men who wound up killing somebody. And because he drove the vehicle there and he drove, the, drove them away, he drove it as the uh, getaway vehicle. He wound up being arrested himself and charged. In this episode, you see where the detectives, they are looking at videos of him uh, playing football. And you see them, he was a running back and you see them go, wow, look at that move. And oh my goodness. And they were just in awe of his physical ability. And they were just amazed. However, they knew they had to arrest this young man because he made some bad decisions. You see, you have to be mindful about who you surround yourself with. This is where discernment comes into play. As I said, he wound up not going to college and uh, he wound up having a record and he was incarcerated. Good opportunities come along. 
where you are able to get a good job, you're able to uh, begin a new venture, a new business adventure, you good opportunities, relationships where you, you meet the right man or you meet the right woman and, and things go well, good opportunities. You see, we have to seize on the good opportunities, but in order to seize on the good opportunities, you have to have something called faith. You see, faith and fear cannot coexist. They simply cannot. And your faith needs to supersede your fear in order to seize the good opportunities. Our focus scripture for today, I read in Luke, the fifth chapter, the first and 11th verse, but our focus scripture is going to be the fourth verse, <clears throat> where it says, when he had finished speaking, he said, he being Jesus, said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. The word deep in the original Greek language is the word bathos, from the same root word as baththa, which means profundity, defined as deep insight, deep, great depth of knowledge or thought or a statement or idea that show great knowledge or insight. And they use as an example, extent, mystery, or in other words, the unknown. When God gives you a vision, a dream, or he gives you instructions, there are three things that you need to do. One, you need to write it down or journal. And yes, men, that means you too. A lot of times when we think about journaling, we think about women journaling, but men, you need to journal too. Habakkuk, the second chapter, the second verse tells us, then the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. You see, you have to write it down in order to make sure that you get the instructions right. Sometimes you have to write it down just to remind yourself of what God has told you because I guarantee you, it is not always going to be easy. Sometimes you need to read it and read it over and over and over again to encourage yourself to not lose hope, to not abandon the assignment. Secondly, you need to prepare. You need to start doing uh, the work. In the book of Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible in the sixth chapter in the 22nd verse, we see here where Noah did everything just as God had commanded him regarding building the ark. And let's be very clear about this. Noah began building the ark, not when the rainbow began, but when God gave him the instruction. You see, what happens a lot of times with us is that we procrastinate. I don't know about you, but I can speak for me. I'm a procrastinator. I will wait till the very last minute to do absolutely everything. I'm trying to get better. That is one of the things that the Lord is working with me on, getting better at being a procrastinator. But you see, the time to begin to do the work is not when God tells you to go, it's when God gives you the instruction. You have to start preparing. You, you need to start laying the groundwork and the foundation. Anything that is successful, especially in business or other things in life. That's what, this is what I have found for myself. It is successful, more successful when you start preparing ahead of time. Prepare ahead of time. Thirdly, then you need to launch. You need to go forward. In Genesis, the, the seventh chapter, the 11th verse, in the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month of that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth and the floodgates of heaven were opened. You see, Moses had already did the work. Noah, excuse me, had already did the work. He built the ark. It did not take him a day. It did not take him a month. It took him years, years of preparation 
years before God told him there was going to be a great flood until the flood actually came. Moses didn't sit on his hands. He prepared. He got to work. So that when the launch came, he was ready. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm a firm believer that this time of pandemic and this time of shutdown that we have been experiencing is not for no reason. God doesn't do anything just because and he doesn't do anything by accident. Everything he says, everything he does, there is a purpose and a plan behind it. I believe with every bit of Jesus I have within me, that God is using this time of pandemic to prepare us in this time of Lenten, time of fasting, to prepare us for greater things. There's a saying, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're gonna keep getting what you're getting. In order to get something different, you have to do something you've never done before. You have to take a leap of faith. You have to launch out into the deep. My brothers and sisters in Christ, it's not faith if you can see it. It's not faith if you can see it. God wants us to depend on nobody and nothing but him. I'm going to say that again. He wants us depend on, to depend on nobody and nothing but him. You see, we can get very complacent. We can get comfortable with where we are. Any preacher of the gospel can tell you they were minding their own business when God invaded their lives and called them to preach the gospel. I can say that for myself. I was very happy and content doing everything in the church. I was perfectly fine with that. But when he called me to preach the gospel, I ran for years. He called me to preach when I was 17 years old. I didn't go into the gospel until I was in my 40s, go into preaching until I was in my 40s. I ran for over 25 years. Why am I saying that to you? I am letting you know that I had to take the leap of faith. I had to jump. I had to launch out into the deep, into the unknown. But it's not a bad decision. Sometimes it's a bad decision to leap because you're not ready for it, but it is never a bad decision to leap with God. Never, ever. In our scripture today, we see where Jesus is telling Peter to do something that was against conventional wisdom. It went against everything that Peter had known. And Peter was not a novice at being a fisherman. That was his profession. That was his, that was his, uh, that, that was his livelihood. But here comes Jesus, this man he does not know, tells him to do something that is against all general wisdom, manly wisdom, man-made wisdom, manly wisdom. And he did it. He launched out into the deep and the reward was great. With great risk comes great reward. With great risk comes great reward. We as the church of Jesus Christ need to think outside of the box. We've gotten so comfortable and complacent with what we do. How many of you know the saying, I know you said it because I've said it when I was a lay person. <laughs> We've always done it this way. We don't do things that way. Well, I'm here to tell you, God is doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing in each and every one of us individually. And he's doing a new thing in the church of Jesus Christ. God does not want us to get comfortable. He makes us uncomfortable in order for his will to be done. I guarantee you, think about it. Jesus was fine being up in glory. He was comfortable. He was good, but when the need arose, he came down from glory to the sinful world in the form of a baby. 
who was born to die. He walked this earth for 33 and a half years. For three and a half of those years, he performed miracles and, 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 and he, he touched people's lives. He changed the world. As Christians, Christians mean we are supposed to be Christ-like. We're supposed to be like Christ. Jesus didn't care about traditions in his ministry. He bucked tradition left and right. because he saw the people, he saw the need. His love for us propelled him to do all of those things. God will not take you into a situation that he's not gonna bring you through. I'm gonna say it again. God is not going to take you into situations that he will not see you through. Why are you saying that preacher? I'm saying that to tell you, if he tells you to launch out into the deep, you better launch out into the deep so you don't miss a great opportunity. Don't let, don't let the train leave the station without you on it. So during this time of Lent and fasting and praying and preparation for uh, the celebration of Jesus's resurrection, I want to encourage you to take the leap of faith and launch out into the deep. When Peter listened to what Jesus had said and, and followed his instructions, and we don't need, let us not miss this. He did, they caught all the fish and, and their lives were forever changed. He had no clue, no idea what the future held for him, but he knew that spending time with Jesus, that following Jesus was a great opportunity. Not only did he recognize it, John and James, the sons of Zebedee, the sons of thunder, recognized it too. Never in the wildest dreams did they ever imagine that they would be part of changing the world, of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Never. They never thought that they'd be leaders in the church, that they, that they would be martyrs, that they would go through what they would go through, that they'd be uh, 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 healing people, performing miracles. Never. With this one incident, that was the launching pad for them. And it took great faith. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, let us write the vision down then let us start preparing and doing the work so that when the time comes, we can launch out into the deep. I pray that this message blesses you. I know it has blessed me. And I pray that you have a wonderful Lenten season and that you have a very blessed resurrection day. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We thank Minister Valerie for that powerful message from the Lord. Certainly, during this time of Lent, we need to be reminded that we should be preparing because the time will come when we will be offered the opportunity to launch out into the deep. Uh, we just praise God for the message. We are thankful to Minister Valerie. And our prayer is that each and every one of you would stop in and spend this lunchtime with us again on next Wednesday. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word from on high. We know, Heavenly Father, that you were in the midst from the time of preparation to the time of presentation. And so, Heavenly Father, we thank you for that. Our prayer, Lord Jesus, is that you would bless Minister Valerie Black abundantly for her willingness to be a servant unto you. Heavenly Father, right now, in the precious name of Jesus, we pray that you would cover us, Lord, and that your face would shine upon us, that you would give us peace and blessings untold. 
and bring us back safely together again. In the precious name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen.